Good afternoon from a rain free, still poorly shoulder, neatish lawn, it's just been cut. Fish are doing well. No rain, very grey, still Peterborough. Day three, upflow faffin. Have I been successful? Find out. Here goes. Three, two, one, valve off. First rinse. I did have the uh, manual valve shut so this might not totally empty, we shall see. My fault. Basically, um, I had that valve closed because in the past I've known for them to pass. And I didn't want that trickling out to waste all night without me knowing. So, if we can look beyond this might not totally empty so we've got 20 20 seconds so after 20 seconds I've got to change turn this valve on to allow the upflow filter to fill back up so then go through its second sequence I've only set mine to 15 seconds right he did his to uh, 18 so now the pump is demanding water level going back up so this shouldn't be a total fill now this should be a partial fill so I need to turn pump off air comes on that is now emptying again but it still will do the full uh, cycle because you cannot change that so at least with this one this will totally empty and there will be quite some delay before it does actually fill this time round I'm currently working on fitting a one-way valve in there so up to now I'm having to turn this manually Plenty of water to play with. 30 seconds to go. Then I've got to turn this valve on. Has it affected the drum level? No. Not in the slightest. But it will do when it starts to fill. So, seven, six, five. As soon as the pump starts to demand, I'll turn this on. Okay, pumps kicked off, water coming in. This is the end of the second flush. Before that was bone dry, this is coming in at a good rate of knots. Timer sequence has now finished. Water looks exactly the same. I think we can call that a success. I hope you agree. 
Thanks for watching. Let's have a bit of cat. So, good afternoon guys from a, well, actually quite all right Peterborough, although well, you wouldn't believe it from um, Steve's thing. Oh, it's always raining. Oh, it's about to rain, he says, but it's actually all right today. So, um, I've realised I haven't spoken to you guys about the garden for a while. So just very quickly, just to go through some stuff, because what I'm doing today is harvesting a tiny amount of what's grown. Start the spring with high hopes, and then gradually everything dies off, and you don't quite get as much, but I've got a little bit. So, what I'm doing here today is some of the spices. Not got a huge amount, as I said. Um, the cumin didn't work, but these are the aniseed, and I've already harvested the coriander seeds. And we've got another lot of coriander in because that's always good to have growing. Um, we're getting fruit. So not many blackberries in this bowl, but I've had bowls full so far. So we'll be eating blackberries next year. Um, a few raspberries, blueberries, one loganberry, but never mind. Um, but just to take you out here a little bit, we might have a gratuitous fish shot around. No, they're a bit of a way away. Um, see what else we've got in the greenhouse. So, we have chilies. Hey! Uh, we've already eaten several of those, several flowers on them. I think they're, they're wind pollinated, so that's quite um, hopeful that we'll get a fair few more on there. This one here is jalapeno, which we've had two, precisely two plants. We can't see any more flowers at the moment, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, we're getting tomatoes, so we've had our first three tomatoes, we've got a good variety. These ones I think, um, plants were given to me by next door neighbour. Um, uh, we've got beef tomatoes and then there's some, you know, I don't know if this will show up against the light, but there's also some little um, baby tomatoes. Um, that one there is caraway seeds. Uh, I, I usually tend to grow caraway seeds, they tend to be the one thing that actually is successful and I don't need to buy, um, but unfortunately this year some of the plants died off as they were about to flower because it's a bit warm in here and we were away. Um, so I've got some plants for next year, so the caraway seeds next year. We've got some dill, this dill is great with fish and it's something which grows really well in the summer but I find I always want to eat in the autumn, so that's good. A bit of holy basil. Um, good for Thai dishes, and yeah, and these are nigella seeds, which are um, the little black kalonji onion, as they're also called. Um, which is quite a pretty flower. Nothing like the big love in a mist, which most times you see. Uh, but these will ripen, um, and I'm hopefully going to get to the stage with these where I'm actually self-sufficient. So I get some for cooking and some for planting next year, which is good. Uh, little gilly flower there which was given to me but given brought down by Gary when he came to visit um, and that's the first one's about to flower so thank you very much for those and we'll see what color it is um, and that's the coriander so that's the next lot of coriander which is all good a few other things in the garden uh, which we're starting to get so none of the root vegetables came up at all. No, I'm lying. One beetroot, which was promptly eaten. So yeah, we'll, we'll give up on that bed. We'll not, uh, not talk about those. Uh, thankfully, next door neighbour has thrown some beetroot over the hedge at me. So uh, thanks very much for Debs. Um, onions, a couple of them are bolted, which I just quite like the flowers, but so I'm starting to harvest those. And they're not very big, but um, there's a fair few of them and I haven't weeded. So yeah, there's... We're quite behind with the garden this year. Um, they'll be charred for slightly late again in the autumn, which is um, that's sort of a very easy to eat cabbage or something's eating that. It might be because we actually haven't got the net down properly. So I'll need to sort that out. And again, I did, I did really well for um, being given plants this year and most of the successful stuff's what I've been given. Um, so I have French beans, which I've actually picked those for today, but you see there's one there that will be ripe in a couple of days. 
Um, there's the runner beans, We're full of hope, but the wind blew them out and blew them over and pulled most of the plants up. So not much to show on there, although I'm getting some. Um, they will be frozen, so with the beans, I love beans, it's probably my favourite vegetable. Um, so boil them for two minutes, plunge them straight in freezing water for two minutes and then freeze them. And that will do give us a few meals during the winter, particularly French beans, because that will be good with the Thai basil and the laxa plant, which we talked about last year, um, in sort of making some quite interesting dishes. Again, another plant I was given. So I wasn't going to do sweet corn this year, but I was given three plants, again, by my next door neighbour, who I think got them from her next door neighbour. So hopefully we'll be able to harvest these soon. So looking forward to love corn on the cob. So one, two, three, four, five, six plants there which is all good. Oh yeah, it's, it comes to this time of year and you just think, you do say spring, you're so full of hope. Um, this time of year, you just, you take what you can. Every win's a bonus. Um, everything that you uh, can get for the garden will taste better. Um, so it's just something else you don't have to buy. It may not be much. And certainly, I know there's a lot of people out there who talk, say, well, we should all be self-sufficient in food. You can't do that. Um, but it's always a pleasure when you do. So yeah, very quick run round um, of, yeah, not a great year for it. Last year was a lot better, um, but still a few successes. So uh, yeah, thanks very much everybody and uh, stay safe and talk to you again soon. Bye. Right, here goes nothing. One way valve fitted. The uh, spring was cut majorly to make it a lot softer to operate. I'm going to leave the valve. The manual valve is open. Counting down. So this is the first rinse of two, this is a full rinse. I'll take this off so I can monitor the level. Yeah, that's fine. 46 seconds. I might just have to play around with the um, timer just a fraction, we'll see. 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. What levels here? Two, one. Now that should cut back in now. And there we go. So this should now count down for fifteen seconds, I believe. So agitate second time. Uh, just only half, so maybe I should lift it from 15 to maybe 20 seconds. And because I can't change the settings, this has to remain at 78 seconds clean, even though there won't be um, basically any water in it for a while. So a one-way valve looks as though that's been successful. I haven't had to touch any of the valves, no leaks, which is a big surprise. And this should fully dump out the water because now there's no water in at all and there's still 30 seconds to go. You see that? 20 seconds now. 
We'll keep an eye on the water level. We'll keep an eye on the... That's all right. Right, this should kick back in, start refilling. Pump has turned on, water coming up as you can see. Topping up nicely, time that it's finished. And that looks as though it's been successful. Well, what do you know? It works. Get in touch with IT, get his plans, build yourself one. Bye. Right, let's have a look at some one-way valves. You're probably wondering why I've got so many. That's because as soon as I see a one-way valve thing, oh, it's just what I need. When in reality, no, it's not what I actually need. So, we will start with the smallest one. This is a 12 millimeter one-way valve, uh, the type that I used in 15 millimeter pipe. If you heat up the pipe, it will actually go in there and just work perfectly. Um, other than that, I would use it on uh, airline plastic. I think it cost me about £2.50 off eBay, and you get a pair. So that's the first lot. Uh, the next one, this is just a standard non return valve that I used in um, like washing machines general 40 mil pipe work i thought i might have been able to adapt one of these and just to give you a view of what this looks like just pull this stopper out and then inside you can see the one-way valve operating just basically a flapper valve and you can actually take these out for maintenance cleaning just in case you need to clean that uh, rubber seal drop that back in push in the plug lock it down with a lock nut and there you have it just a standard you might just be able to see that in there just a standard domestic non-return valve and these are I might as well give you a measurement because this is what I wanted that's uh, 13 centimeters whereas the these little um, one-way valves were four centimeters next is this big beast this is a one and a half inch check valve this is the one that I doctored to work on our system so I'll do it I'll give you a measurement first if I can get this in the right order and that is 16 centimeters I'll take it apart so you can have a good look inside it. This is the one that's complete. So just basically one end, a rubber washer with a step in it. The step has to go down on top of this thing, which I can only describe as the um, protection for a pizza when you take the lid off and you see that little plastic tower very similar to that the spring inside so the spring uh, on our system has been cut around here so it's actually um, easier for the spring to actuate or the valve to actuate and then inside is just basically an empty body and I'll take the other end off just so I've done a thorough job There is supposed to be a rubber seal there, but I borrowed it on another job, so this is partially redundant. And like I said, this is one and a half, a clear flow direction inside. 
very easy to take apart and clean set that on top of there then the step in the rubber that sits on top then apply a little bit of compression now what you've got to remember about these is this type is very easy to actuate that it barely needs any flow at all for it to move this type the pressure type requires a lot of pressure from your pump so expect to turn your pump up to a higher value in order to overcome that spring so these although very robust and work well they can be quite costly in electric just to force that out of the way and allow the passage of water right next one sorry if I'm rushing along this one is 21 centimeters long this is the flapper valve that I wanted to use on our system but I didn't have 21 centimeters of space one and a half inch again solvent weld rubber seal inside take the other end off identical except the rubber seals popped out of that one and then inside if you can see that the actual valve itself is on an angle and that requires barely anything to actuate that and push it out of the way so basically this is a flapper valve yep so the direction of flow is here and any direction of flow back just basically seals that very very robust transparent so you can see it actually working just pop that all together again for you so flap evolve and then the last one the one I bought yesterday because it did fit and they ended up not using it so direction of flow this is called a true union check valve this is just short of 16 centimeters long flow direction seal and an end inch and a half as usual that's all I seem to use on my system a lot of people have two inch but they do do a two inch version this end is slightly different so there's a thicker seal on this end and then inside is a ball sits inside there in this this cavity and can allow travel backwards and forwards so put the seal back in have I done that the right way around I wouldn't surprise me if I hadn't anyway so basically the flow goes in here and you can see that the ball moves as the flow uh, sorry the flow is uh, that way I'm telling you a load of pack of lies here so the flow goes this way the ball drops to the far end and because there is an air gap around here the water can travel around there there is a big restriction with this ball so bear that in mind and it's fairly heavy so like this one you're going to need to uh, increase your flow rate but when the ball tries to come the other way it basically jams against that rubber seal and creates a non-return element so that is very robust inch and a half but I didn't use it thankfully I kept the receipt so I can return that so as far as prices go this one is around 15 pounds this one as I mentioned was about two pound fifty for two this one I believe is around 27 pound this one I've seen as high as 34 pound and this one is 22 pound there's a little sticker on the side anyway so I, I can't fob you off with that 
Um, personal choice. I like this one basically because it's great and matches the rest of my pipe work and I'm just finicky. As far as not putting your pump under pressure, this one. If you can find a space to fit one of these if you need a non-return valve, this is the one that I would recommend. This one, similar to that, requires extra flow rate from your pump and electricity being what it is, you can well do without increasing your costs. So I hope that helps. I'm not an expert in one-way valves, but it's the fact that I just happened to amass quite a number of them for no apparent reason apart from putting them in a box with fittings in my shed. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. So I hope you found this latest video mildly entertaining. This is now working a treat, absolutely love it. I've got to faff around with the timers because I've got to overcome this spring in here, although I cut it down so I cannot follow Terry's specific timing seconds. I think I had to set this to 80 seconds and I've also got to go from 18 up to about 24 to give me sufficient water to create a decent second rinse. Three stage dechlorinator taken apart and cleaned and that will go in the shed inevitably. Thanks to Kat for a little bit on the garden. I hope you found some interest in the one way valves. I just happen to have so many I thought I might as well do a chat about it but they can be very handy if you need them in your system uh, so that's about it for this uh, section of this video I'm sorry that I put so many out this week I must be boring you to tears by now but we just had so much going on and it's quite valuable to ourselves and hopefully to yourselves just to document what we've found and uh, hopefully it'll help you in the future anyway like I keep telling you and I'll continue to tell you Look after yourself, two jabs, stay safe, take care of your family and goodbye.